Hey, and welcome to Tax Talk with the Tax Queen. My name is Heather Ryan. I am also known as the Tax Queen. Hey, and in this video, I'm going to review the six simple steps to starting a remote business. So if you're an RVer or a digital nomad and you wanted to start some kind of service or, or selling products and you want to make it a, we'll call it a legitimate business, um, I'm just going to give you the six steps. So number one is choosing your business structure. I have a whole video devoted to business structure, but you want to figure out which one is the best for you before you go and start registering and go any further. So just a quick review, you can be operate as yourself, right? Your legal name. So Heather Ryan, you can pick sole proprietor that that's a sole proprietor operating under, under your, your legal name. You can be a single member LLC, which is also a sole proprietor and requires registration. You can operate as a partnership if you have multiple people in an LLC, and you can also be an S Corp or elect to be S Corp. And uh, also there's C Corp. So really it's sole proprietor, partnership, S Corp, C Corp. So if you have any further questions on that, I suggest you watch my video on choosing a business structure. Next step is choosing a registered agent. And I put this in here specifically for digital nomads, for RVers, for those who travel, you need to have a registered agent. Okay. What is a registered agent? Is somebody who basically serves um, as your, you know, mail receiver, so a, a processor, so someone who can get legal mail on your behalf, someone who can be found between, you know, regular business hours, Monday through Friday, nine to five, chances are you're probably not going to be found at the address that you're providing. So that registered agent is serving as that person who can be found at any, you know, during business hours to serve a lawsuit, to just get some legal mail and things. It also keeps your name off of any registration if you want to in some states. So your registered agent can, can be the only one on there with their address. So you're not sharing personal information. That is another benefit to this. And really you want to just pick um, a reputable registered agent. I actually have some that I recommend. Um, Northwest registered agent is who I recommend. Don't just go by price, but by what services they might offer you and, you know, how they're best going to serve you. And do they have it in the state you're registering in? So I say this, you have to choose your res registered agent so you know your entity structure um, before you even go on to the state to start, right, to start your business, to register your business. So those are your first two. Number three, we finally can go and register our business because... Now we've picked our entity structure. We know our registered agent. I have all that information. Um, but as, as we're going to register, make sure that your name is available. So most secretary of states, um, that's kind of the common place that I see where you register a business is they have a business search. So you can just run a quick search if your business name is available. If it is, great, go ahead and get registered with that. That's awesome um, and get set up with that. If you need a DBA or a doing business as, or a fictitious name. These are this is the time when you can file all that. You know, registering encompasses many different things, um, and those are usually filed with the state. Sometimes with a county that you're in, if you want, want to file a DBA or a fictitious name. And then lastly, I do recommend you get an EIN. So that's your employer identification number, and that's directly through the IRS, and it is totally free. So you're going to fill out that information and then you're going to get that EIN number um, at the very end. When you're done filling out all the information, it'll print out a, a letter and you can save it as a PDF so that you have that to refer to later. And you'll understand why um, when we go further. So you have number one, picked your entity structure. Number two, chosen a registered agent, which you're going to need for step number three, which is registering your business. And step number four is understanding your tax obligations and obtaining any special licensing that you need to operate your business. So this could be a sales tax license with the state, possibly a county or a city business licensing or sales tax, depending on where you are and what your product is or your services. So just to give you a little heads up for those who are RVers, the popular states such as South Dakota, and Texas, both tax services, not just products. So be really careful with that. Um, Florida does as well, but it's usually only in-person services. So online services don't encompass that. 
The other thing is if you're going to have employees and you're going to run payroll, you're going to need employment tax accounts. So this is when you would start doing that and making sure you're all set up to go. Um, and if you're going to do payroll, you know, now is the time to kind of get that going. And just also, this would be a time to, to research and understand paying quarterly estimated taxes for a self-employed individual or for a partner in a partnership. And I actually will have a whole separate video on this, um, and it's a whole separate topic, but I'm not going to get into that too much. But these are just things I'd like to say, you know, as you're getting set up, making sure you're understanding all of these different, we'll call them moving parts, right? Number five would be going ahead and opening a business bank account. And I know I have a separate bitty video on why you need a separate business bank account from your personal, right? Separating personal and business finances. So you want to take that EIN letter. Remember, we just talked about that when you were registering. And you want to go to the bank of your choice, take that EIN letter, take your articles of organization. If you're an LLC, if you filed a DBA or fictitious name, you would take those paperwork, have it all together and ready to go. If you're going into the bank, take it with you. If you're doing this online and opening an online account, just have it um, easily accessible so that you can upload it and share it with the bank. So you maybe want a checking account. It's probably the number one thing people want. You can have a savings account to go along with that. I know there are other people that will have multiple accounts of this. If you're in profit first, you know, you want multiple accounts um, for, for tax savings, um, for payroll, like different purposes. And then if you need a credit card or a loan, um, now would be the time to get that going. So that's number five. Number six would be to start your record keeping process. Okay, I say do not delay in keeping good records and making sure you understand all of your income and all of your expenses, everything you're spending uh, on this business. So just get started right from the beginning, right? Start off right and do QuickBooks. You can do Wave. You can do FreshBooks, Zero. I mean, there's so many options. Those aren't even all of them. You can even have an Excel spreadsheet if that is the easiest way for you to keep your records. Um, but just make sure that you're getting it set up from the beginning. If you had any expenses, you know, using a lawyer, um, registration fees, all of that, right? Those are all expenses to get started. So just make sure you're recording all that right away. And uh, maybe you already have a client and that's what's spurring you to get registered. So make sure that you report that income, right? As soon as you're registered, you can send an invoice to that client. Bam, you have income. So just make sure you're recording all that and getting that started from the very beginning because it's way easier to do it as you go along than to catch up later, especially right before tax time. So let me just review the six steps to starting a remote business is number one, choosing a business structure. Number two, choosing a registered agent and understanding why you need one. Number three, register your business for all the right, um, you know, the state, the DBA, all of that. Number four, understand your tax obligations and obtain any, any licensing that you need, any special licenses. And number five, open a business bank account, checking account, savings account, it doesn't matter, open them all. And number six, to start your record keeping process. So there you have it. Good luck as you start your new venture. If you like these six tips that I just gave you and the steps. I actually have wrote a whole ebook devoted to this. It goes into a little more detail on each step. Uh, it explains uh, entity structure and just goes into a little more detail. So if you like that, um, click the link or visit the link that's on your screen and go ahead and download that. It's only available on my own website.